Yeah, hello and welcome to Kimba Bushcraft. Today I'm in Royal Forest, beautiful place. Never been in this park before, so yeah. It's really cozy and you can see the sun is shining uh, sometimes and uh, there's a drifting clouds, but blue sky I can see here. And welcome to my series, Viking from A to O. And uh, this time is the letter E and I'll talk about evidence uh, regarding the Viking Age, fantasy and creativity and so on. It's not going to be much, but a little thing I would like to talk about. Yeah. And beside that I have some uh, things, a little special meal, a Viking meal that I will prepare out here. 
um, yeah, I'll show you that a little bit later. But uh, now I'm going to uh, find some firewood and uh, get my fire started. Nej, 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 nej. Nej. Yeah, and today I'm going to make something called dandelion fritters, and, uh, yeah. and I'll eat these, but first I have to make a, a dough in this ball. Yeah. And for making the dough I need these ingredients. It's uh, almost like a pancake dough. I have some flour in here, egg, honey, salt and milk, and then I have some butter uh, for the pan. So uh, yeah. First I'll take first I'll take some flour. Yeah. And uh, mix it in with some milk. And then, uh, then I'll add the egg, like this. And then I'll add some uh, honey and um, a little bit of salt. Yeah. Then I just have to make it. Ah, no, no, no. Tastes good, yes. Yeah, you can see here, perhaps a little bit more milk in. They have to be thin, this dough. Yeah, I think it's fine now. You can see here, yeah. So, um, then I just take the tops 
of the dandelions and put them down here. Yeah, and I have some more, but this will do for now. See how much we can eat. to uh, light my fire and put on the pan. And then some butter on. And then I put these on. I think it looks delicious. I do. And then we uh, have to turn them. Yeah. I think they are almost done. At least some of them. these yeah like this and then I have to and then I'm going to set my water over for my coffee
So now just a little bit honey over these. And then I think it'll be a real delicious Viking meal. Oh yeah. That's okay. It's really good, tasty. Mm. But I think a cup of coffee together with it will be nice. So let's see. Wonderful day out here, really calm and uh, quiet, yeah, I like it, and I'm glad you joined me. So, yeah. Nice and crispy. And the last one. Mm. Yeah, and now for the the topic I'm talking about today. Perhaps it's a little bit controversial. Um, yeah, it's about the Viking Age and the, the evidence of what they made and what they could do in the Viking Age. And uh, it was because I saw a. a Danish uh, broadcast, television broadcast about the Viking Age, and uh, yeah, they interview a professor uh, on a university in England, and he said uh, to look at the Viking Age is like looking uh, through a, a frosted glass. 
you have to look very careful to see details. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to uh, talk about today. Um, there's a lot of findings from the Viking Age, but um, if we have to find uh, evidence or proof or uh, something uh, regarding the Viking Age, we have to be careful. Uh, you can get information from writings, from archaeology and uh, rune stones. And um, regarding the writing, the Icelandic saga was written uh, about 200 years after the Viking Age. And uh, yeah, uh, during 200 years much can happen and therefore we have to take it with a little bit of um, grain of salt, as we say in Denmark, uh, if you have to believe all the things that are, was written down in the Icelandic sagas. Uh, both because of the many years from the Viking Age until they were written and also because uh, Christianity was uh, also a part of the uh, heritage in Iceland at that moment. And um, beside that there was a Danish uh, uh, writer called Saxo Grammaticus that was, has written a, a, a big uh, book about uh, the Danes and also the Vikings. But again he was later than the Viking Age, a uh, hundred years later, and uh, it was uh, ordered by a bishop. Um, so also there, uh, it was the Christianity eyes that was looking at the Viking Age. And then there was a guy called Adam of Bremen that came down from south in uh, Germany, and he uh, spent a lot of time in Denmark and Norway and Sweden. And uh, he wrote a lot of things about the Viking Age, and he was actually uh, in uh, the Nordic countries during the Viking Age. But again, he was a Christian, and uh, he was telling uh, stories uh, through his eyes. So again, can we rely on all those things that were written there? I don't think so. Also, the, the monks in England that was attacked by the Vikings, uh, Lindisfarne, and after that, they uh, wrote a lot of things about the Vikings. and. It was not uh, uh, sweet things they were saying about the Vikings and uh, it was uh, with their intention to frighten people and uh, say that the Vikings are very evil and uh, pagans and so on and uh, not at all Christians. So again, the written sources we have to uh, consider if, if everything is true, uh, we cannot rely on that 100% and uh, it's always a matter of opinion how you uh, interpret the writings from that time. Uh, then there's the uh, archaeological findings and uh, there's a lot of archaeological findings in, uh, in uh, Scandinavia. In Denmark we have Hedeby and uh, Roskilde and Ribe and uh, Leira and many places in Norway they are Oseberg, the Oseberg sheep, Goddak sheep and many other places where they have found uh, things from the Viking Age. And in Sweden uh, especially in Birka and in Uppsala. And of course also in York, in England. York was a Danish town uh, during Viking Age in England and uh, a lot of Vikings went there. And of course there's a lot of uh, archaeological finds from that area. But again, you have to look at these findings uh, with a little uh, bit of grain of salt, a little bit of skepsis. Because uh, it's been many years they have been laying in the ground and uh, much have vanished during the times, so I think we are allowed to have a little bit of fantasy and creativity and make things that um, could have been made in the Viking Age. That's my opinion. Uh, as long as you are uh, faithful for the material they had, um, they didn't have stainless steel, they didn't have cotton, uh, they didn't have potatoes, all those things that uh, came later in the uh, history uh, as long as you don't use these things and uh, try to look at the, some of the uh, designs from the Viking Age and be inspired to make your own, then it doesn't matter if it's exactly how the Viking made them or how they looked. Uh, I think it's more about being inspired to make something uh, similar and uh, evolving things. And of course, the Viking Age was several hundred years and uh, uh, 
the techniques, the designs and all that also uh, evolved uh, during this time. So uh, for me it's important not to be fanatic about these things, but uh, make some room for other thinkings and uh, other ideas. Yeah. I like the creativity in uh, the process when I'm making things and stuff. And now in uh, about 10 days I'm going on the YK market for the first time with my Osebert tent. And uh, yeah, I made some furniture for this uh, event. Uh, These are not exactly replicates of things that are found in uh, Viking graves or ship bearers, but for me it doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, one last thing. Now I've joined the Viking group of uh, Lindholm Hoy. Lots of nice folk that have the same interest as me. Um, some of them are more uh, keen on be very faithful for the Viking Age and exactly copies of the things that have been found. Others are like me, uh, thinking, yeah, as long as it's, it's smelling like Viking, it's okay. And uh, I offered the Viking group to make a YouTube channel. And a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, they had a, a workshop a whole weekend where the was a teacher that uh, was showing him how to make York turn shoes and I made a little video about that, uh, not much, but um, I put a link in my video description for this video for this channel and you can go in and uh, check it out and uh, subscribe if you want to. It's going to be on Danish because it's a Danish uh, Viking group and uh, my first video is mostly uh, details from the workshop where they uh, sit in our room. We have a place where we can uh, stay and have our meetings. And uh, yeah, I hope you like that. So uh, go in and check them out and subscribe if you want to. And uh, follow us on uh, this YouTube channel too. And today Cornelius has been uh, exceptional good because he hasn't run away he stayed in my sight and if I was too far away I just had to call him once and he came running so he's a good dog Yeah, folks, this is all for now. If you're wondering why I have these marks on my head, it's because, yeah, I raided a town here nearby, so uh, these are wounds from a sword. <laughs> no, it's actually Cornelius wants to wake me up in the morning, and uh, yeah, he has sharp claws, I have to cut them, so he makes my scratches, my um, evidence of a battle yeah now uh, we are heading home and uh, yeah editing this video and launch it sometime this weekend hope you enjoy our little video from uh, Royal Forest a beautiful place a nice day and a delicious meal yeah as a Cornelius you want this no it's mine <laughs> it's mine <laughs> No, yeah. Well, folks, I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye bye and take care. You're a little bandit.